Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We are back again with a review of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. This game was released back in 2004. With Swan Song coming out, I was curious how it holds up today. There's a lot to cover in this review, so let's get right to it, starting with what I liked. The premise is fantastic. Vampire the Masquerade is a world where vampires exist, but they carefully hide that fact from humans. The Masquerade is a list of rules they live by to help ensure their existence stays secret from vampire hunters and others who would seek to do them harm. One of those rules is you have to ask for permission to embrace a human or create a new vampire. You play as a fledgling vampire who was created without the permission of elder vampiric leadership within the city. Consequently, you and your sire are quickly kidnapped and judged. Your sire is beheaded, but after dissension from other vampires, the prince chooses to spare you. This starts an incredible journey of completing tasks for the prince while also getting familiar with other powerful vampires. Part of what makes the story so enthralling is the deep lore this game takes full advantage of. Each vampire comes from a specific clan, and all of the clans have centuries of history that help define them. Not only are you constantly picking up new information about this community, but much to the game's credit, you get this information through dialogue. I do appreciate experiences like Dragon Age, where there are books and notes everywhere that you can read to get more lore-related information. That being said, I think there's a lot of players who can't be bothered to do that much reading in a game and get a lot more from the way Bloodlines conveys the history of the vampire clans. Speaking of vampire clans, you get to choose one for your character, and this is an area where the game really shines. All of the clans are different, and some can completely change your playing experience. Play as a Nosferatu, and you will be a disgusting-looking creature who can barely walk the streets without breaking the masquerade. This forces you to take greater advantage of the city's sewer and ventilation system throughout the game. Playing as a Malkavian will give you special dialogue options, and you'll hear whispers that hint at the future. My Malkavian playthrough was one of the few times a game convinced me that my character was absolutely insane. It was an incredible experience. There's no wrong choice, and there's a case to be made. It's worth doing seven playthroughs to experience them all. My playthrough was as a Bruja, a clan that specializes in melee damage, and I had an absolutely great time. After you pick your clan and watch the intro, there's a fantastic tutorial scene that teaches basic mechanics while also dumping a lot more lore on you. Once that's done, the training wheels come off and you are free to roam. I love the way Bloodlines packs the environments with content so that nothing is wasted. I've gotten so used to huge areas filled with repetitive tasks that I have forgotten how games used to be. If there's a building, more than likely a quest will take you there. Everything you run into has a purpose, and it's just a matter of time before you figure out what that purpose is. The tight environmental design is coupled with fantastic quest structure. There are no collectibles, fetch quests, or honestly any quests that feel like they are just there to pad the time. Just about everything you do has story-related elements and clear reasons for why you would want to do it. Some of these quests are legendary set pieces that hold up incredibly well even today. The Haunted House, the Psycho Ward, the Werewolf Confrontation, your first fight against the Vampire in the Sewers, all of these quests and more are just absolutely incredible moments that stick with you long after the credits roll. Quality writing and fantastic voice acting work together, making you even more enthralled with everything that is happening in the game. There's a certain raw and raunchy tone to Bloodlines that the voice acting matches perfectly with. In a different game, some of these performances will be corny or perhaps even grating, but here it all meshes into a wildly entertaining blend. The list of memorable characters is astounding, and many of them don't get very long to shine. Smiling Jack, the Vorman sisters, 
Fat Larry, Maximilian Strauss, Velvet Velour, Vandal, and a host of other characters make very strong impressions. It's rare that I notice something like this, but I really like the economy in this game. Money is not endless, and you have to weigh your purchases carefully, especially if you use firearms, since ammo can be very expensive. This makes it a big deal when you get a large amount of money, and even if a new weapon is a clear upgrade, you are forced to consider carefully if the expense is worth it. I played with the unofficial plus patch mod, and oh boy, it was a significantly better experience than what I had when the game originally came out. Loading screens go by lightning fast. I only experienced one crash. Some weapons that were scrapped in the original have been brought back. It's just unquestionably a superior experience. There are a lot of other mods that can also improve your playthrough, but unfortunately they don't play nice together, making it difficult to figure out what is safe to stack on top of this. So I stuck with just one mod. Still, it made my playthrough 10 times better and I am very grateful for all the work that was put into it. Finally, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines has one of the all-time best soundtracks in gaming. I don't even particularly care for this genre of music, but walking around as a vampire, it all feels perfect. Whether the song is vocal or an instrumental, you are pulled right into the setting. I had never before heard an instrumental that felt like it was meant for a strip club, but Vesuvius' theme fits right in. There are some aspects of the game I am neutral on. While the unofficial patch mod creates a much better experience, overall the game still feels kind of janky. Again, this is a significant step up because before the game felt flat out broken. Since crashes and incredibly long loading screens are fixed, you pay more attention to things like how hitboxes don't work well in melee combat, and that while you can play in third person, I'd argue your character moves super weird, creepy, and just off if you do. It's all small things that don't really take away from your enjoyment of the game, but they come up enough where it is noticeable. I am also neutral on your character sheet. So on the one hand, it covers a broad spectrum of possible tasks, giving you a ton of flexibility to craft a specific kind of character. My issue is in practice, these options aren't equal. Persuasion is king, while intimidation and seduction aren't nearly as useful. Looking at the sheet, you would think all three are equally viable options for changing people's minds. Inspection is completely useless, since you can just use your eyes. Melee and firearms are presented as equal options for combat, but that is only true for a limited portion of the game. In the beginning, firearms are terrible, and melee combat is pretty clearly the more effective route. In the middle, they even out, but then in the late game, firearms become the clear front runner, leading all the way up to the final boss, who is several times more difficult if you haven't built up your firearm skill. I don't like this and feel more should have been done to make both combat options equally viable throughout the game, while also ensuring more of the character sheet is effective when you put points into an ability. Quick note before we get into what I don't like about the game. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate you hitting the like button. This information tells me which content the channel is enjoying and helps my video spread to more people. I really appreciate all of the support. There are some things about this game I don't like. In a couple of instances, you are forced to make dialogue choices that are potentially completely against the manner in which you are role-playing your character. An interaction that forces you to finger a vampire for a crime feels particularly egregious and a rare instance of poor writing in the game. I only felt this way a couple of times, but they were definitely standout moments in a negative way. It never feels like you are establishing any sort of friendship or romance with any of the NPCs. Personally, I prefer games that let you have party members. If I cannot get that, then at least let me develop a romance and friendships with other people that essentially take the place of actual party members. The Witcher series is a great example of this. In Bloodlines, not only do you not get party members, but there is no real romance and virtually no friendships you develop either. Essentially, 
everybody is out for themselves and there's no opportunity to pierce that veil of security and gain a new partner. I understand that fits with the theme and tone of Bloodlines, but I just don't like it. And frankly, I think it creates a weaker experience than what you would have if the game allowed real relationships to grow. Finally, in my opinion, the ending is just okay. It's fun and definitely entertaining, no matter which one you choose. There are multiple endings, but it's mostly based on decisions you make in the last couple of hours in the game. When I play a game with a ton of different decisions where I am constantly impacting people's lives, during the ending, I prefer gaining some understanding of how those decisions affected people in places I visited. Bloodlines doesn't provide anything even close to that. It's essentially a wrap up of the game's last few missions. The ending isn't terrible, but I was left feeling like there should have been more. All in all, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines is an amazing game. If you have not experienced this yet, I cannot recommend it highly enough. With any luck, Swan Song will provide us another fantastic game in the universe, and Bloodlines 2 will live up to the original. One can only hope. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a like, share this content, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.